We're live, we're live. What's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes from the Ring to the Concrete. You got to stay ready so you ain't got to worry about getting ready. And we definitely are getting ready and staying ready by today's special guest. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you and tell you the tale of the tape of who he is. He's an American boxer from Stockton, California, but by way of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. He's in the lightweight division as a professional boxer. He's currently uh, sporting a record of 5-0 and with three KOs, very heavy-handed, and he just won, and he's the newly crowned SWC lightweight champion here in California, is my man. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This is the first person I've interviewed here in Stockton, California, and I live in Stockton. Stockton, step your game up, man. Yo, it took my boy to, to come on my show first. Jose in the guest. What's up, Jose? How's it going, guys? How's it going, man? It's a pleasure to be here, guys. Shit, man. man. Oh, no problem, brother. No problem. Jose, uh, let everybody know uh, who don't know about you. Um, how did you get started in boxing? Man, so again, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Jose Inigas, a.k.a. The Cub. Uh, the way I got started, man, to be honest, kind of, I guess kind of getting, getting into trouble because I used to hang around with my, uh, with my uh, god brother. Me and him we were always really, really tight, really close, and you know, I'm I'm short, dude. I'm five set, five six, five seven on a tall day, but uh, <laughs> you know, ball, ball was my life, man. Ball was everything to me. Uh, I used to play basketball with my uh, godbrother all the time, mm -hmm. but you know, us being young and, and dumb, we're always and this was at a very young age. Uh, we're just sneaking alcohol from our parents and drinking and just acting a fool, man. And then finally, we got caught up, and uh, they, our parents were like, nah, no more. You guys can't hang out no more. You guys can't kick it. Yeah. Like, all right, all right. So uh, around that happened around my uh, maybe I want to say uh, eighth grade, my middle, middle school, eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And then going to ninth, 10th grade, I uh, wasn't doing much. I tried out for the basketball team, didn't make it. Uh, and then on my uh, junior year, they had a couple of basketball players ask me, hey, Jose, you going to try out again, man? Uh, I think I said, I think you'll make it this time, dude. But I think they'll try and give me a hint. Mm -hmm. But I was already kind of taken back from it, man, because to me, it was, I was like, I was, I was putting in the work and it didn't get recognized. So just for the simple fact that maybe Austin is close to the guys in the basketball team. Mm -hmm. So long story short, man, I just didn't try out for it. Life went on. Senior year came around and I wasn't doing anything, man. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't playing any sports or anything. I was just still like still go like shoot the ball and stuff around here and there. But uh, I remember sitting, we were on like Christmas vacation or it was like a two week break. I know it was a two week break. And then uh, I was sitting there with my, one of my close friends and I was like, hey man, he goes, what? I was like, so you're gonna take me to the boxing gym? And he was like, what? Boxing, like for what? I was like, I wanna start boxing. He's like, why? I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything. Like I wanna do something. Like I always wanna try it out. Why not? And uh, he, he uh, I called and ended up calling my uh my auntie his stepson her stepson uh used to box for the SPYA the Stockton Police Youth Activities because his dad was a cop so uh I ended up calling him I was like hey man I asked him where the gym was at he told me and it's as cheesy as it sounds man it's one of those things where you walk in and I was like man this is it like this is it like you just I do it like I just felt it in my heart I said like, I, I know this is what I'm gonna do um. I think what I had to do with that was watching the, I don't know if you guys, I know the contenders back up, right? Yes. Yeah, so I remember watching the very first season with uh, Sergio Martinez, I think. Oh, and yeah. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I yeah. remember watching that. I remember just them putting in the work and stuff. I was like, man, this is awesome, dude. Like, for some reason, I was always attracted to uh, just work, working out and, and putting that hard, that hard work, dude, because uh, my brother used to be a, a, a track runner, and I used to always try to run with them. I didn't keep up with them, but I always finished what they did. If they're running five miles, like I said, I didn't finish at the time they did, but I finished the five miles. So all those all those things together, man, I think just uh, helped me really get get that sense of like, man, you know what? I might as well try boxing. So I thought for, for a while what, I, what else I could do if I'm not playing basketball and boxing boxing fell in my hands. And I said, like I said, I walked into that gym and it was history downhill from there. Wow. So. Like you, I, I did the same thing, but I played team sports, bro, and team sports were, they're great. But when it comes to being, relying on someone, I want to take that last shot. I don't want to, I don't want that, 
if I pass the ball to that guy and he drops it or he fumbles it, and it's like, oh man, because because you know you live with the team, you got to die with the team. Yeah. And, it sound, and it sounds real selfish, but being a fighter is you put all that work. You have a team that collaborates, that comes around you, that 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 builds you up and and and, and gets you to the fight, gets you to the big dance. But when you go in there, if you get beat. If you get your, if your ass get knocked out, that's all on you, bro. Yeah. But if you win, it's it's you and your team. But you did it. You're the one that's taking the punches. You're the one that's that's delivering the shots. You're the one that's dealing with that man. And so my thing to you is, what was your reason behind picking a single sport instead of a team sport? I can't can't say anything other than that exact same thing. Just not having to rely on anybody. Not having nobody's looking at. At, oh, because he, he gets along with that person, he he's gonna make the team, or he, or they vibe together, they have that chemistry. Like, nah, it was just more like, like it's me, it's me and that other dude in the ring, and the better man is gonna come on top. That's right. as simple, simple as that, and, and that's what really attracted me to it, man. It's just, it's it's you, and and if you're not there, like mentally, physically, just if you're not with and, like as a whole in there, like just you. Mm -hmm. not there completely you man you're gonna have some trouble but right. taking the uh, necessary steps to like get ready for it man that's what that's what i think just drives me to it because it's just like a like a one ten, like like i said like you said uh, a one-man thing mm -hmm. it was a man one-man thing i don't have to rely on anybody it's just me i have to put in the work i have to put in and that's it i don't have to worry about hey that guy didn't finish the 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 ladders right Run them again, like damn, dude, like dude, is that guy we doing this shit again? Like fuck, hey. <laughs> this is me, you know, like fuck. If I didn't have, if I didn't finish the, the time the workout, I'm gonna fall short in the fight. So right. it's just it's just me knowing that it, the only person I have to rely on is me and not on anybody else. So that's really that's really what really drove me to to boxing. Jose, you mentioned repetition. You mentioned doing things over and over and over again. We live in a microwave society, bro, where they want things immediately. They want things fast. Um, uh, the younger generation is known for being entitled because they, you know, um, they have so many things to just give into them. Can you please explain the life lifestyle of a boxer, man? Because I hear kids say all the time, you know, they watch Creed, they watch Rocky. Oh, I want to do that. You know, I want to win a title. You know, uh, you don't know, you don't know what it what it takes in order to become a fighter, the, the lifestyle, the dedication, the things that you must do. So uh, for a young kid like myself, I come up to you and say, hey, I want to be just like you. Give me some game. Give me, give me, give, be the real with me, what I need to look forward to. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of uh, discipline. Um, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of discipline, sacrifice, man. Just, it's, it's like you say, it has to be in the heart. It has to be in the heart because if, like right, right. And for instance, now I'm 29. I'm shit. I'm, I feel like I still go, I can still go out and party and stuff. Mm -hmm. You go, you go on your, especially now with all the social media, you go on your timeline. It's very easy to get caught up in all the hype. Yes. So social media is brought a whole new, different ball game to 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 the sports, to everything, to to lifestyle, to discipline. Because you click on that timeline, or you click on your start going through the stories, you see everybody out there partying Halloween. Everybody's doing their thing, enjoying themselves, going out on trips, eating whatever, you know. And people, people are big on that now. People are big on, on, on posting their food and everything. And you see, bomby ass sandwiches, <laughs> all kinds of spaghettis and shit, pizzas. Fuck, oh. oh, dude. Oh. And it takes a lot for you to be like, no, I'm gonna stick to my veggies and chicken. No, I'm gonna stick. You know what? Oh, they're partying. Cool. I'm gonna go run me some five miles. Mm. But I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go work out. No, I'm gonna stay in bed and, and just kind of relax for to get ready for the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Like now, especially now, I'm getting ready for this fight November second, and uh, everybody I see everybody going out for Halloween parties. Would I would I love to do it? Yeah. But I love the sport a lot more for me to even say no. I'm staying. I'm gonna stay home and dedicate myself to my craft. So, to the young generation, man, I really. I really it really, I would I always advise them, and I, I mean, every time somebody asks me, like, "What do you think I should do?" It's like, man, stay away from all, all the people, all the negative people in your life, all the negativity. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with the same people that have similar goals to you. Yes. Because the same, 
people are gonna are gonna get you ahead. And I could honestly say that since I once I started hanging around with just nothing but fighters, that was my main focus, main focus. Because there was there was a small a short time where I kind of slacked off a little bit, mm-hmm. and that's when I started hanging around with people, people that partied a lot. And I kind of started going in that direction, that direction. And then I was like, but but I still have my fighter friends. And then I was like, man, you know what? I started shying away from that. I started hanging out with more of my fighter friends. And it's, it's, it's just been nothing but focus, nothing but focus. You use that to motivate yourself, to motivate each other. Sometimes you, sometimes it's harder to do it by yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard. It's, it's, a, it's a lonely sport. It's, like, it's a lonely sport. I tell them too, I was like, be, be, be used to being alone a lot. Yeah, that's it's a lonely road. It's a it's a tough road, man. It's a tough road. There's, there's times where I've lost a lot of uh, contact with a lot of friends. Not because uh, you know, because we because we bad, bad things in bad terms. Just because they know I'm busy all the time training, and you know they still show me support. They still show me support. They still be like, hey man, I, I know what I'm talking a long time, but I see you doing your thing, man. Do like kudos to you. Like keep it up. Yeah. And there still be times I stay in my house by myself, and I'm just like, damn, dude, like. It's just really is a lonely sport, but the rewards and everything that 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 come from it, there's man, like like no other. Only you can experience that, right? So use that as motivation. Use that as motivation. The wins, the the feeling you get after win, after you sacrificed everything that that everybody else is out there doing, man, this is just an unbelievable feeling. You just like, damn, dude, like. All that work, just man. You, you as a fighter know much, more well than know than how that feels, and it's, yeah. it's just a feeling that fuck, dude. Like nobody can take that away from you, man. So if you if you really want this, I tell them just be ready to do things that not everybody's doing. Put put that extra work in. You send you two of your friends go into fighting. You and your friend go into fighting, and you'll know and you'll notice it, dude. Like you'll notice it. Uh, you see people in and out, in and out the gym, in and out the gym. And myself, I always tell people, like, this is you, or this is you and your friend right here. You guys both go to the gym, it's here. And then he misses a day, now you're up here. Mm. You guys both go to the gym, you guys both up here. He misses a work after, after you guys both go to the gym, you're up here. Now you put in that extra work, now you're way up here. Right. So like, always doing that extra, always put in that extra work and and doing that, man, shit, I feel like you'd be on a good path, good path to succeeding where you want to succeed in boxing. Wow, wow, uh, great answer, man. Um, I want to ask you this this question right now. It's, 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 it's off on the curve, but this is one of my favorite questions I like to ask people. Um, who are your favorite fighters when it comes to three different categories? Who are your favorite fighters when it comes to offense, number one, defense, number two, and ring, IQ, smartness, generalship for number three. So who's your favorite, very favorite fighter when it comes to offense? Offense. Man, that's, dude, that's tough. Because <laughs> uh, I know that on top of my list for sure, man, uh, Loma Checo. Hey, he's just, the Matrix. man, his offense. Yeah, dude, he's just bananas. He's just, his, his defense, his reaction time, and everything, dude, is just on point. Yes. It, it, it's hard. It's rarely does he skip a beat, you know, and uh, offense. Oh, man. It could be anybody, anybody, pass or present. Offense. Offense, offense could be, uh, also, I would say Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, he was just. Monster too. He was just a tank. He was a gorilla. Even his man. defense too. Yes. Yeah. Dude. As far as IQ, I'll say, you know, I'll say Mayweather, man. Yeah. It's just he's he's just man, like his placement in the ring, his placement where he needs to be at the right time and just mm-hmm. boom on on point. On point. And I feel he's he, that's why he's had the career he's had. Okay, okay. I got another one for you. You got 24 hours to live. The doctor comes and tells you, you say, you can do anything you want to do. You already know for a fact that you want to have one last fight. Who would you want your last fight to be? 
past or present. Anybody, you can have anybody from the past or right now. Who would you like to have that fight against? Man. Man, oh man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 24 hours, one fight, man. One fight. Dang. I would, I'll probably go, man, just because just cause I know we're from the same hometown in Mexico. Yeah. I'll say connect. Oh, hey, hey. And I'm telling guys right now, man, Canelo – is the man right now. Canelo, when he fought Triple G the first time, I don't care what nobody say, my boys, y'all still can get on me. Canelo won that fight. I see why they made it a draw, but Canelo, Canelo be after after Canelo fought Floyd, it changed, he, he changed his whole situation, oh, man. His style, man. Yo, he looked like Floyd Mayweather when he fought Triple G. Yeah, he did, dude. And uh, man, that's exactly what I told people. I was like, dude, I was like, after that Mayweather fight, dude, he's, he's just, he went a whole different level, like, and he took so much from that fight. And that's a guy that, like, I always feel, I always tell people, like, that's a guy that he don't ever stop growing. He grows from every fight. He grows from every yeah. fight. Yeah. So, you know, whether there's the speculations they said about him or not, oh, man, dude, he can't. You still got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. You still got to be smart in there. Yeah. So... That alone it, it says a lot, man. So I would say Canelo, man, just for, for for the reason that us being from the same hometown, okay. I think that would, be, that would make for a great fight. Hey, that, that's a great answer, man. That was a, definitely a great answer. I'm pretty sure it would be a great fight, too. Um, what is your message to uh, the world? What is your message to the world, Jose? For, do you want everybody to take notice about you? What, did, what would you like to tell everybody about you? Man, you know, my message to people, man, just just uh, don't sleep on me, man. Uh, I believe hard. I believe in my heart that I'll make it. I'll make it in the sport. I'll be known. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna make noise. You believe that, and and I'm sure. I'm sure I will. You know, I wouldn't be in the right sport if I didn't believe in myself. Yes. You know, that's it. Takes a lot. It takes a lot for for somebody to be in here and. And put in, like I said, like I've mentioned before, put in the work, put in being missing out on like parties, whatever. And it's nothing that I mind. I don't mind missing out on parties because this is what I love to do. Is it's my life, it's my passion. Mm -hmm. So as long as I keep I keep that passion, that fire inside of me burning, trust me, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I always believed ever since I was a little, I was a little kid. Um, I didn't. I always knew deep down inside that I was meant for something greater. Yes. I can't, it's hard for me to always, it's hard for me now to picture myself on a nine to five. Mm -hmm. it, it's not me. It's not me. It's not what I want. It's not everyone who I want. It's whatever I wanted. So for me to sit here and, and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to settle for a nine to five. It wouldn't be myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a very ambitious man. I'm a very humble man. Uh, I don't try to disrespect anybody. Of course you disrespect me. I'm going I'm to clap back. I'm going to say something back. And trust me, it's going to be witty. Yeah. But but also, I will show that respect. That Like I said, I'm humble. I respect people. I, I try to carry myself good, man. I try to set, set good examples. And a lot of times, people get caught up in the hype of, like, all the crazy fighters. Nate Diaz, Andrew Broner, all the trash talking, all the stuff they do on the cameras. That's all. It's, it's entertaining, man. But at the end of the day, you can't take away from the Maidanas, the Pacquiao's, the, the, the humble guy that has just yes. been up there just yes. making just as much noise without having to do all that ruckus right. and still coming on top. That's right. You know? Right. So, that's what my people is, is just stay tuned. Stay tuned because it's going to be a quite a journey for me. And my journey and I, it's just started and it's not going to stop. I'm going I'm to make it to the top and you will hear about my name. Cool. You know it. Yeah. Um what do you have planned in the future? I know you say you have a fight coming up. That's this weekend, correct? Could you let correct. her could you let her I know second. could you let her ride know where it's gonna be at, the venue, so they can come out and support? Yeah, definitely. Uh it's gonna be uh here, Stockton, California, mm -hmm. at the Civic at the Civic Auditorium, November second, on uh, Friday, Friday night fights, Dia de los Muertos. 
There's yes. going to be some dead bodies in there. <laughs> Man, we have a lot of talent on that card. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, we have a lot of talent on that card. From Keto the Kid, Hector Madera, Manuel Jaimez, Matthew Guerrero, Andrew mm -hmm. Cordon, uh, dude, just Blake McKernan, uh, all these guys, dude, all been doing big things in the game. And we're up and coming fighters making a lot of noise. So uh, if anybody is around the area or is able to come by or is passing by and you have that time to, to stop by the show, I, man, dude, you do, that's the show you don't want to miss. It's the show that's one of those shows that I feel, and I, I believe down in, deep down in my heart that's going to go down in history. It's like, hey, man, remember that card? All these guys are up here. I get these. Are, all these guys are up here already, dude. Like, I remember when all these guys fought. We'll be on a pay per view card, and I remember. People, I know people will talk about it, like all these guys fought on the same card mm -hmm. back in November, 7th, 2018. I just know it's it's one of those cards. It's gonna be it's gonna be down. It's gonna go down history. Hey, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to uh, Toscano. See if I can get a press pass. So I can as soon as you win, man. So I can get that interview with you, brother. Yeah, oh, definitely, man. Uh, I'm sure Toscano's a great man, dude. I, I wouldn't doubt. It. I, I don't. I don't think he'll deny it, man. So he could talk be. to him, or yeah. if you need, if you need to talk to him, I'll talk to him, man. Uh, I, I try to stay in contact with them every so and often. So if I could help in any way, I will. Oh, don't worry about it, brother. Hey, uh, what are your social media handles so that people can start following you if they want to reach out to you? He's a very humble brother, man. I mean, I reached out to him and he hit me right back. Um, yeah, let everybody know how they can follow you. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Cub underscore CR. Um, Facebook, Jose Indigas. Uh That's all the, really that's all the social media I have. Snapchat, Snapchat uh, SPYA underscore CR. Uh, and that's it, man. If you guys want to follow me, follow my story, follow my journey, make it to the top. I smell, highly appreciate that, dude. I appreciate all the love, all, all, the, all the support that I get from anybody. It's, it's something that you can't take away. It's something that you got to realize that people are taking, and I realize that people are taking their time out of their day, out of their lives, that they're never going to get back just to show me support, just to go out there and that, for that night to be, to make me feel that energy, to make me, to help me come out with that win. So in that sense, I appreciate all the love, all the, all the people following me and, and just showing me love, man. I appreciate it all. No problem. No problem, brother. We, we, we support you. Uh, definitely. Uh, me as uh, uh, here in Stockton, but you know, as uh, one of your uh, boxing brothers, so we looking for great, great things to come up. Keep an eye on this kid, Jose Inigues. This is Coach Stokes, Stokes House Boxing Academy. You got to stay racing. You got to worry about getting ready. And we out. <laughs>